Hi everyone, my name is Jose and I'll be representing Team Lifeline. During this demonstration, I want to go over some of the capabilities of our medical device known as the predictive pulse oximeter. Traditionally, pulse oximeters make use of a red and infrared LED accompanied by a photodiode in order to calculate the heart rate and blood oxygen saturation of a patient in real time. Team Lifeline wants to make modifications to this system by introducing a predictive element using machine learning. The predictive pulse oximeter will predict the risk of hypoxemia of a patient at any given time. The predictive pulse oximeter can be broken into four major subsystems. The pulse oximeter controller, which the user will wear and which will take the measurements. The base station, which will act as the central database. The machine learning algorithm, which will predict the risk of hypoxemia in a patient. And the web server, which will act as a graphical user interface. The pulse oximeter controller will begin by initializing a Wi-Fi connection to the access point established by the base station. Once connected, the pulse oximeter controller will connect to the base station as a TCP client. When the patient puts his or her finger on the sensor, the pulse oximeter controller will begin taking measurements and automatically calculate and transmit heart rate, SpO2, temperature, and alarm data to the base station every second. This can be seen by the following print statements. The base station communicates with the pulse oximeter via a bridged access point. Because of this bridge, the base station still has access to the internet while connected to the pulse oximeter. Once the base station receives live patient data, the machine learning algorithm determines the likelihood of a hypoxic event. To communicate with the machine learning algorithm, the base station application uses the C Python API library. This creates a Python environment inside of the application to run the machine learning module. The machine learning training model implements a linear classifier algorithm, which uses a large data size of 50,000 samples for both testing and training purposes. The data is extracted from an online clinical database and synthetically generated using known correlated attributes. The synthetic data generation includes attributes such as age, BMI, temperature, and the SpO2 level of the patient. If the chance of a hypoxic event is high, then the base station and pulse oximeter will alarm. The data is logged locally and then sent to the web server after a predetermined number of measurements. The base station communicates with the web server via an HTTP put request. Once the web server receives the data, it's stored into a database along with patient information for user access and potentially for further data processing. From there, the user can access their dashboard and see a near real-time view of heart rate, blood oxygen saturation, and patient info. They can also select from a list of timeframes and see trends over time. In this way, the web interface works in conjunction with the onboard alarms to provide users with feedback about historical and current trends. So in conclusion, we hope that a predictive pulse oximeter like ours makes its way into the clinic and consumers' homes. Thank you, and go Lifeline. Go Lifeline. Go Lifeline. Go Lifeline. Hello everybody, we're group 7, Plan.ai. Now let's take a look inside the hardware setup. As you can see here, this is a soil moisture sensor, humidity and temperature sensor, and a Pi camera right over there. Now let's power them up and take a look at their functionalities. After you make sure four LED lights are blinking, Everything is properly set up and ready to go. Now we can see the data is updating every one second. And this is before we put the soil moisture sensor inside the soil and hence we have a 0% in soil moisture. Here is our test plant basil and we have the soil moisture sensor ready inside the soil. Now let's take a look at the data after we water it. And yes, you can see the data is going up as expected. Now, after everything's set up, all you need to do is switch this switch right here. And then the Pi camera will capture a photo of your plant and tell you the plant type and the ideal growth condition on your phone app. A Python script runs on the Raspberry Pi every minute sampling data from the Pi serial bus and uploading the data to a storage bucket on AWS in a JSON format. 
This data is then accessible through a public link where it is used by the back end of our iOS app and our web interface live data plotter. You'll be able to see the data update once I refresh this page. Our bucket also stores the name and a picture of the current plant, where the picture captured was the input for our machine learning model and the plant name was the output. I will now start up our live data plotter, which runs through node.js. For this demo, the plot is said to grab new data from the AWS bucket every five seconds and add it to the plot. In our real application, this would only update every minute following the update cycle of the data from the Raspberry Pi. The plot continues to expand until it shows 60 data samples. From then on, the plot only shows the last 60 samples, which equates to data from the last hour when the update interval is set to one minute. This scrolling functionality can be seen on another plot, which has been running for a while. The iOS app displays current sensor readings as well as launch notifications that can help the user improve their plant's growing conditions using a library of ideal values for a certain plant type. So immediately opening the app, the user is greeted with the image of a plant, the plant type that was identified from, a, from our ML algorithm, the ideal values for that respective plant type, uh, featuring temperature and moisture uh, thresholds from garden.org, a message box that displays our plant's health, and our uh, temperature, moisture level, and humidity levels that are um, updated directly from the plant sensors. A feature of this app is being able to launch notifications. So I'm going to tell Michael to uh, remove our moisture level sensor to manually trigger the notifications. As you notice, we receive a notification and we see a message box to water our plants because the current value of 0% is below the ideal value of 5%. This notification logic works for the temperature value as well. Now to demo our ML algorithm in action, I will have Michael take a picture of his basal plant. The algorithm will uh, correctly identify the plant type and update the app with the new image that was just taken and the identified plant type. As you see, the image that Michael just took is now displayed over here. The plant type has been correctly identified as basal and the our our ideal values have been correctly uh, updated for referencing this demo shows that the app successfully displays current sensor values and uses ml to help find the plant type and its ideal values to optimize plant growth Our product is now fully wearable with both Pi and STM32. So first, this is the STM32 being attached to the arm. Here are buttons, LCD display, GPS, power bank, and the buzzer. The Raspberry Pi is being carried in the shoulder bag, and the Pi camera is attached out of the bag with a LED. This is the power bank, and we are using Bluetooth to communicate between STM32 and Raspberry Pi. First button is for capturing photos, the second button is for turning the program on and off. Now I push the button to start the facial recognition. We are using Taylor as a known person this time, so we will recognize her photo on the screen. Now you can see Taylor is being recognized on the LCD screen, and the last time I met was in Belleville. Then I press the photo capture button, you can see the LED lights up and the buzzer sounds. This is the alarm to notify others. The photo will be uploaded directly to the cloud and deleted from the local machine. Also, the location is updated. The LCD is displayed in Seattle now. Then we will show the feature of adding new people. We will use the photo of Jackie Chan as our example. Now I will capture the photo. You can see the LED lights up and the buzzer sounds, and it will be uploaded to the new people album, which we will process later in the web app. 
When the user is done with the official program, they can turn the program off by pressing the second button. Then it will recognize nothing. After we send in, we can see the photos we just took. We can delay the run photos and upload the unknowns with their names. Now we will show how to register as a new user. After typing in all the information, you can click create account and then you will receive a confirmation code. As a new user, you can upload photos. And you will see the photos after you refresh the website. And you can type the name for the photos. This is how you initialize your dataset. This is the end of our video. Thank you.